Hey, coming up, we have stories about holiday dinner, a colonoscopy, family drama, golden child, ex-wife coming on vacation, overreacting over cake. Is there really such a thing? And babysitting. We're going to have more drama than there will be sugary treats during the holidays. Am I the astronaut for refusing to allow my wife to host holiday dinner for my son and daughter-in-law when they disrespected her by not inviting her to their wedding? I am a 55-year-old male. My wife and I have been married for 10 years. I have a son with my ex-wife. I met my current wife two years after the divorce. My current wife is 35. My son was 15 when I met her. She has always tried to be a to be good to my son, but he and his mother have always tried to cause problems. His mother was jealous when I moved on from her after she divorced me so she could have a chance with her new director in the hospital where she worked. When that didn't work out, she tried to come between me and my then girlfriend. As she stated, she wanted me back. I'm telling you all of this so you can understand the BS my current wife went through and why I won't allow this dinner to happen. Okay. When my son and his girlfriend decided to get married, they sent an invitation with just me on it. When I asked why my wife's name was not on there, my son said she didn't want her there. Now, my wife has spent money on my son when he was a teenager and made it possible for me to give him things that he wanted at that time. She sacrificed things that she wanted to do so that I could be there for him. When we got that invitation, my wife said it was perfectly fine and to go and have a great time. Well, I went to the wedding. This was in April of this year, and my wife did her thing. Now, last week, my ex-wife informed me that she was going to go up to Tennessee for Christmas with her new boyfriend, and that if we wanted to host Christmas dinner for my son and his wife, she was fine with it. I said nothing, because it's not any of her business. My son asked me about it a few days later, and I told him that we will absolutely not host Christmas dinner at our house because my wife was not invited to their wedding, and she will not be used and disrespected in her own home. I made it clear to him that this house is the majority hers, and she got the loan, and I paid the mortgage just in case he tried to say that this was my house. He got upset and stated it was not fair to just exclude him and his new bride. I explained to him that I'm making plans with my wife to go to a nice restaurant and have Christmas dinner. My wife's family lives out of state, and so does my family, so it's not a big celebration. I told him he could spend Christmas with his wife's family for dinner and that we had planned to just drop his and his wife's gifts off to them. Oh, he's still getting still getting your gifts, so... My son called me a piece of shit and an asshole for not making his wife feel welcomed. Ah... Uh, Sweet irony, how we meet again. I reminded him that he never made mine feel welcomed either, and not inviting her to the wedding was the icing on the cake. Hey, it's punny, right? I'm not choosing my wife over my son. I'm demanding respect for her in her own home. I feel justified. However, my son told his crazy mother, and she has been harassing my wife on the phone about how she has broken my son's family. I called her to remind her that she was trying to have an affair when we were married and divorced. And she divorced me. Now my son won't speak to me. My current wife said she appreciated me standing up for her, but would like to see us mend our relationship. Okay. This is 100% NTA for me. And and the kicker for this for me was that... I don't I don't like that OP still went to the wedding without standing up for his wife then. But I understand it's your kid's wedding. Right. Uh, But I think allowing that or still going instead of taking a stand there and fighting for it more probably could have prevented a lot of this shit later on. Um, His ex-wife obviously likes to stir the pot and likes to create trouble. Her reaching out and saying that she was going to be out of town. And if he wanted to host Christmas dinner for their son, she was okay with it was a chore. She handed him a chore. Right. And his son and his son's wife are somehow incapable of like cooking and hosting their own meal because it's like they've got to go to someone else's house to be able to celebrate. So at this point, it's like um, you cook your own damn dinner. And then and then so somebody giving you that chore whenever they did not when they, whenever they didn't respect your wife and then uh, and then you telling them that and saying, hell no, we're not doing that. And then them saying you're singling out me and my wife. It's like oh, it's sweet, sweet irony. And for for her Opie's son not to be like, oh, you know what? This makes sense. This seems like a life lesson. I don't want a valuable life lesson. 
Uh, he, he seems like a spoiled little shit to me. And there may be more to this story here, but it this is an NTA for me. Um, you can't treat people like shit and then expect them to do you favors. And we see this all the time, and it baffles me. It just straight up baffles me how people can treat other people like shit and then be like, I, I would like to ask you to do me a favor and have like nothing nothing stops them no no filter stops them to think hey you know what you treated that person like shit before maybe you shouldn't no they're just like yeah i'm gonna ask that's some real entitlement not uh not a fan of the attitude here i and i understand op i understand your wife's position here where she says she appreciates you standing up for her but she she wants to see you mend your relationship i get that i get it however i think the pain that that this situation is causing you right now will fade. This pain will fade um, uh, unless your ex decides to make a continued stink about it for an extended period of time, which could be possible from what you've told us about her. It could be possible. However, you've taken a stand for her. I think that pain will fade and she will be happy and be thankful later on that you did take this stand. I wish you had done it sooner, but it had to be done at some point here. And for both your ex and your son to be willing to treat you like shit and then expect special treatment, expect you to cater to them. Like what? I would try to dive into this a little bit more, OP, and explain further the lesson that you're hoping is learned here and offer a path to redemption. Offer a path. Let them let them know what they need to do to make up for it and how they need to apologize to your wife. I, right now, there's no path to mending this at all. There's no there's no sentence for them there's no penance for them to be able to work their way back into your good graces you've just said nah if you want this to be a true lesson and if you want them to better themselves as people i think giving them a path to that is uh, is a good thing as a parent but nta you're not the asshole at all for what you did you were completely justified there you go Here, this one comes from the AITAH subreddit as well and is titled, Am I the Askinaut for Telling My Husband That He Has to Let My Dad Witness His Colonoscopy? In every marriage, there comes a time where you will have one incredibly awkward situation with your father-in-law. I guess this post breaks the rules on Am I the Asshole. That's why it was on AITAH. My mother-in-law wants to be in the room when I give birth. Ah, uh, now it all makes sense. She is an unpleasant and pushy woman, and none of her own daughters have allowed her near them when they gave birth. My sisters-in-law are all at least 12 years older than my husband and are all done having kids. I am the last chance for my mother-in-law to see the birth of a grandchild. I have zero interest in letting that judgmental old woman see me down there. She has objected to me from the beginning because I have tattoos and I am not in any way interested in being a stay-at-home wife. I do have a lot of tattoos and a career I plan on continuing. And I have tattoos down there that are none of her business. Oh, come on. That would be so funny, though. I'd get extra ones just for just for the birthing process. Make them temporary, but but just extra ones. That would be great. My husband is her baby boy. Oh, uh, here's my baby. I so sure hope we get some quotes from mother-in-law here so that so that Moira can make her grand entrance. He's a good husband and has stood up for me against her many times. When she tried to interfere with our wedding, he put his foot down. When she tried to convince him that we should move to his hometown where he could work from, but I would not be able to find an employer in my line of work, he said no because my career is important to me and while we can live off of his earnings and the cost of living is lower in his hometown, our combined earnings are much better altogether. She has started crying to him that all she wants is to see a grandchild being born. All her friends have experienced it, and she wants it. He is starting to crumble under her emotional blackmail. Now you stay strong. So I made it clear that the only way I would agree was if, before the birth, my husband made arrangements for my father to witness him getting a colonoscopy. He would need a ride anyways, so two birds, one stone, you know? He said I'm being ridiculous, but I said none of my brothers would let my dad see them getting a camera shoved up their ass, and he felt left out. He finally understood my point, but his mother is upset that I used such a stupid comparison. 
She says that it isn't the same thing at all. I offered to change it to me watching her get a Brazilian wax, and she hasn't called in a week. I know seeing a baby being born might be her dream, but I am not interested. Am I the astronaut? Opie, your hubby doesn't get to doesn't get to decide who gets to be in the room. And you illustrated that beautifully here. There we go. It's petty confetti time. It was, it was a beautiful illustration of the my body, my choice kind of approach here by saying that if you're not willing to let someone else watch you exposed down there having a medical procedure, then shut up. But also, this is why I'm saying that you don't get to decide, hubby. You don't get to decide who's going to be there. What really is great throughout all this and what I was going to mention before is that mother-in-law throughout all of her begging and pleading and saying that this is my dream, all of my friends have achieved this or have had this experience, but I have not. You see, for me, it's not about the bebe at all. It's not about me being there in some kind of supportive role. No. Oh, no, no. This is about me achieving something that my friends have that I want. Me, me, me. She's got the memes. She's not. She doesn't mention anything about wanting to be there to support the, the mom. She doesn't say anything about wanting to be there for the baby. It's about her. It's about something her friends have that she hasn't had and she wants it. That's what she said. Could you say that in a more selfish way? Could you be a little bit more blatant about having the memes? Because holy shit, lady, this is uh, this. This mom sounds like a terrible person. The problem is that Opie's hubby knows that she's a terrible person. He's had to stood up, stand up for to her several times before. He's had to stand up for his wife to her several times already. But he's starting to crumble now. Absolute worst time. It's only because she's putting the pressure on heavier and heavier. And he she's playing the pity card here like it's her last chance. Well, Shouldn't have screwed up all the other chances. Shouldn't have screwed this one up. Again, going back to our last story, it amazes me how people can treat people like shit and then expect them to do them favors. What did you expect, Ma? Bet you wish you could go back in time and undo all that shit you did before so that you could be part of this moment. But even then, it would have to be if you were in some kind of supportive role here, which means thinking beyond yourself. And I think she's just not capable of that. Okay, this one is actually from the AITAH subreddit as well and is titled, Am I the astronaut for telling my brother's wife that she is welcome to get a hotel room if she's going to keep complaining about everything in my house? My 28 female brother, Alex, 33, his wife, Rachel, 35, and their daughter, seven months, are staying with me until after Christmas because they are back in our hometown for the month and our parents' house is being renovated, so they have nowhere else to stay. I'm a nurse and work strange shifts sometimes. A few nights ago, I got home around 2 a.m. after my shift. Usually, I work either day or night shift, so getting home at 2 a.m. was a bit unusual, but it happens sometimes. Anyway, I walked in the house as quietly as I could, but the stairs creak, so Rachel heard me come up. The next morning, she asked if coming home at 2 a.m. will be a regular occurrence because I woke her up. She asked if I can avoid coming home at such hours or walking up the stairs because she'll wake up. I said, I'll avoid it as best I can, but some things will be unavoidable, and I apologize in advance. She keeps complaining every time me or my brother walk up or down the stairs when she's trying to take a nap or at night when she's asleep. She's been complaining about literally everything. She'll say stuff like, ugh, this Wi-Fi is shit. Ugh, this area is too noisy. I can't sleep. Ugh, this couch is bad for my back. Ugh, the fruits here are terrible. Ugh, these forks are too thin. If she was complaining about things that I could change easily, then I wouldn't mind because I do want them to enjoy their stay here. But hearing her complain about everything under the sun is draining. I hate coming home from work just to hear her complain and complain and complain. Yesterday, after she was complaining about how much she hates my induction stove and telling me that I should just get a regular gas stove, I said I keep my house just as I like it, so she shouldn't worry about it. She said, yeah, it's how I like it, but it makes it difficult for guests. I said I barely ever have guests and the only reason they're staying with me is because I wanted to do them a favor, but that they're absolutely welcome to get a hotel if she'll just complain about everything. 
She told my brother about our conversation, and he said, I've put him in a tough spot because he can't afford to get them a hotel or Airbnb for weeks, but now I've made his wife not want to stay with me anymore. I said, that's all on his wife, and none of that's my problem. Things are very hostile and weird around here now. Am I the astronaut? Hell no. Nope. No. She doesn't have the right to be shitty. She doesn't have the right to complain. It all, it's the theme for the night. The theme for the night is... I'm going to treat you like shit and, and expect you to do me favors. Except this one's even better. This one's, I'm going to treat you like shit while you're doing me a favor. How are people so self unaware? I don't understand how people, how someone could be this dumb to be bitching about everything in a place that they're staying for free. And guess what? Mom's house renovation was intentional. I'd put money on it because she doesn't like hearing this woman bitch either. And yeah, so your brother, your brother now doesn't disagree with you. Your brother just says that you put him in a very tough spot now. Well, what about the spot that you're in? You, you think he's in a tough spot? You've got to come home and listen to his wife bitch about everything every day now in your own house that you're letting them stay in for free. That is a her problem and a him problem. Figure it out. If you're going to stay with me, you don't get to bitch about everything. And if you bitch about everything, you'll be asked to leave. Go stay with mom while the renovation's going on. See how you like that noise. You ever stayed in a hotel? It's not perfectly quiet. Go get an RV. Stay in the middle of the damn woods. It's quiet-ish. Till the bears and the wolves show up, right? Well, since you have no choice... It looks like the only option is that she has to shut her mouth. I know, it's unheard of, right? Honey, you're going to have to stop complaining for a few days because this is not our house and we're staying here for free and we can't afford to go stay somewhere else. So maybe just don't complain. Maybe because that's the only option we have. Dear God. (laughs) Oh, man. Am I the astronaut for telling my sister she's free to criticize my work as soon as she accomplishes anything in life without our parents holding her hand? (laughs) He shot fired. While our parents loved me, 30 female, and my younger sister, Olivia, 27 female, we were not treated equally or held to the same standards. I was always expected to be a hardworking, accountable child to make responsible choices. But Olivia was encouraged to have fun, and our parents bailed her out whenever she made an irresponsible decision. She's the baby, right? For example, when Olivia performed poorly in school due to not making an effort, they would pay tutors to do her homework. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a great lesson, folks. But if I genuinely struggled in a subject, they would tell me to figure it out myself. Their justification was that Olivia was the baby sister and she needed more help and attention than I did. But they have still clung to this excuse when Olivia is well into adulthood. Yeah, she's 27. I still love my parents, but due to their favoritism, I am honestly closer with my husband's parents than with my own. I think this is probably common. My parents helped financially with the first two years of college. Then I had to cover the rest of my bachelor's and master's degrees myself. They financially supported all of Olivia's education. Olivia wanted to become an RN, just like our mother and grandma, but she could not pass most of her general education courses and eventually dropped out because she said it was too hard for her. Olivia then convinced our parents to invest a massive amount of money into her to begin a business. She owned a store that sold things like candles and bath bombs, but the store went bankrupt after a year. That's pretty fast, especially when you have seed money. But I think most new businesses go down. Well, I don't know what the percentage is, but most new businesses don't survive a year. Currently, Olivia is unemployed and living with our parents. She claims she is figuring herself out which means she is mainly partying and spending time with her high school friends. Olivia is upset because many of her old friends are no longer in the area. She'll call me to express her disappointment because her friends are moving on with their lives and families of their own, and they have less and less time for her. I tell Olivia I am sorry to hear that and that I have to hang up soon. We celebrated my son's birthday with a family dinner. I was talking with my aunt-in-law about my students. I work as a creative writing tutor on the side to pick up some extra money. 
it's Jessica Day. Yo, it's Jessica Day. I help my students with world building and whatever else they need help with in their stories. My students are all passionate people with genuinely good ideas, and it feels as if we're just having a conversation. Olivia joined and asked a few questions, then commented, Not like you would ever be able to make it big yourself. No offense, sis. I responded, Olivia, quick reminder that you have accomplished nothing in your life without mom or dad holding your hand. As soon as you do, you can criticize my work all you'd like. Olivia was, of course, offended and started causing a scene. My parents and a few other relatives said my response was cruel and I was out of line to say it. But my husband and his family say that Olivia invited it after insulting me first. So I am conflicted about if I am in the wrong. I am hoping for some unbiased perspectives. Edited to add, several of you asked if Olivia had a learning disability or another impairment that caused her to struggle academically. Olivia has never been suspected of having a learning disability, much less diagnosed. I explained Olivia performed poorly due to a lack of effort because she would either skip classes constantly or take 20-minute bathroom breaks every class period. Olivia was and still is intellectually capable of succeeding academically, but I believe Olivia has never learned how to apply herself and to not give up when things become challenging. This is because she was trained to be the baby and as soon as things get tough, give up or ask mommy and daddy for help. And now she's 27 and they never never weaned her off of that approach. And now she is literally just suckling on the teat of the parent favoritism that she's always, always received to this point. What was the original question? Am I the asking for telling my sister that she's free to criticize my work as soon as she accomplishes anything in life without our parents holding her hand? This was a response to her criticism. And I think I heard something not too long ago that makes a whole lot of sense for this. And it was a quote goes something like this. Can't even remember who said it. It was don't expect me to apologize when you hit me first and I hit back harder. Something to that effect. You can't. You can't complain whenever you get hit back by someone. This is like a a, a grown up scenario flashback to when they were kids, probably. And and Olivia would antagonize OP here. OP would react. Olivia would run and tell her parents and OP would get in trouble. This is probably it's just the same old trick over and over and over again. Yes. Olivia's mentality here is I can do whatever the F I want. And if anybody's mean to me, I'm the victim. I can say whatever I want. I can offend whoever I want. I can fail however I want. I can take advantage of people any way that I want. And if anybody said shit about it, they're the bad guy. OP, you can take some comfort in this. OP sister Olivia created her own pain here. She's creating her own pain. She's creating it by by touching the hot stove, right? She keeps doing these things that cause herself pain and then blaming other people for it. Uh, but putting herself in this position over and over and over again, the cool part for you, OP is that mom and dad aren't going to be there to support her forever. There's going to be a point way too late in life for Olivia to turn anything around. There's going to be a point where she has no one to baby her anymore. And she's just an asshole and no one wants to be around her. And she's confused and she doesn't understand why life is so hard for her. And she's already kind of there, but she's still getting she's still getting babied. So imagine what it's going to be like when nobody's there to baby her anymore. How the hell is she going to deal? How is she going to cope with life? Where is she going to go? What is she going to do? It is time to start figuring shit out. Now, I will say at 27, I, I believe between 20 and 30, there's a lot of figuring oneself out that actually does happen. I don't think I started doing life anywhere near right until 30. I think 30 is whenever I started figuring shit out. I don't think, I don't think my adult life started until then. And I had already been a parent for, for 10 years at that point. So I, I mean, there, there is a grain of truth to this because, because she may be figuring herself out, but she's doing it in a very shitty entitled way. And that's the problem here. Am I the astronaut for canceling a trip because my fiance's ex and her baby are coming? I, female 32, have been with Kyle, male 37, for two and a half years. We got engaged six months ago. Kyle has been divorced for over five years. He was married to Elena, female 37. They have a son, Grayson, male 8. Elena has a toddler from a guy who she met after her divorce and dated briefly 
Ella, two and a half female. Grayson is a wonderful little kid. He has his room in our house and he is so loved by all of us. Kyle and Elena are good friends and are great at co-parenting. The problem I have is that she is everywhere. Beside the holidays and birthdays, which I understand, Christmas, Grayson's birthday, Thanksgiving, Elena and her baby are pretty much invited to any family functions such as Kyle's birthday, Kyle's parents' anniversary, my birthday. Yes, Kyle invited her to my birthday, our camping trips. I've talked to Kyle many times, but he thinks I'm being insecure for no reason and making a big deal about nothing. I booked a trip to Mexico for January for me, Kyle, and Grayson. I'm going to red flag it right now because... OP said, I have expressed this to my partner and partner said, you're overreacting. He's, he's a step away from the Brozo award here. Kyle told Elena that on the last week of January, we will have Grayson for one extra week since he is coming with us to Mexico. Apparently, Elena managed to ask him about our trip dates and details. I saw on Facebook she was posting about swimsuit shopping for her upcoming trip. Kyle texted her and asked her if she's going somewhere that week, too. She said she researched our hotel and... I took advantage of the same deal as you guys, so I guess we will see you there. Ha ha ha. Nope. Now... Now it's just... Now... Now it's just creepy. There's there's chummy, there's buddy buddy, there's civilly co co parenting, there's being friends and co parenting. Um, now it's creepy. I told Kyle that we are canceling the trip, and he said we can't because tickets are non refundable. I told him that I'm not going. I want for once to have a family vacation without his ex wife. I want a family vacation without his ex wife. But Kyle thinks there's nothing that we can do now. We need to address this for future plans and be more clear about boundaries. Comments. Uh, commenter says NTA. There's good co-parenting and there's this. It's nice that they are friends and that they and you are great with Grayson, but not getting any alone time will drive you apart. And Elena is reveling in it. Elena is a single mom and probably wants to get back with Kyle. This isn't right. And your boyfriend is not looking after you properly. He needs to buck up or this will not work for you and Kyle. Another commenter says, Kyle basically has two wives at this point. OP needs to put her foot down and he needs to grow a spine. Another commenter says, I'm not sure why you want to stay in this very bizarre relationship. He invited her to your birthday? So many red flags, I'm not sure which of you or him are the most clueless. I'm betting on you. He knows exactly what he's doing. Time to move on and find a man who is for you and your little group. I'm surprised that you have lasted this long being the side piece. Ooh. Original OP responds, yes, because we are on friendly terms. Apparently, he thinks we are friends. So, of course, she should be invited. I roll. She's like a vampire. She's like a vampire that your boyfriend keeps inviting into the house. And yeah, he's getting the award here. He's getting the Brozo Award for sure. Um, and also, he's climbing up the Ascon scale as, as OP keeps talking here because she... She made her feelings known to him. And Candy Thunder and I actually had a conversation about this recently, too. Whenever I think we did it on a live, but whenever um, whenever you tell your partner how you feel when something's bothering you, it is so that they can have an opportunity to change something or fix something. Right. If OP hadn't said anything and had just kept it to herself, it would be a different situation here. But she brought it up and said, this really bothers me. Can this can this be addressed and he's like ah you're just making a big deal out of nothing just get over it and then now she's going to be tagging along on their freaking vacation and she's like no i will not do this and he's like well you have to do this so he's steadily climbing up the ask on scale here for just dismissing her feelings absolutely pretending like they don't exist and that's going to blow up in his face here soon. All right, here's the update. December 6th, 2023, just a few days ago. First of all, thank you for every single comment. I read all of them. Kyle came home last night since he was working on a project with his coworker. He saw me awake and got surprised and asked, is everything okay? I said, we need to talk. I basically told him that either he tells Elena to cancel her trip and establish his boundaries or we are done. Good on you, OP. Good on you. He said, oh, my God, are you still on this? And said, I'll talk to her for future events. Let it go for sake. Yeah, buddy. Something uh, uh, that wasn't didn't mean to do petty confetti. I meant to do another brozo here because, yeah, that that always works. Are you still on this? Do you still feel this thing that you told me you felt before? 
My God, would you still feel this way? I said, no, this has been my life since we met. She and her baby are always in my hair. I get upset. You convince me to let it go this time. Then it happens again. I reminded him that last June we hosted Elena's baby's birthday at our backyard and paid for and did everything. And he told me to let it go then. Where is the limit? Will she be invited to our wedding and be in the bridal party? Will she be in our honeymoon? Will she be at the delivery room when I give birth? He said, we're both tired. Why don't we talk tomorrow? Punting is uh, is this guy's strategy. He's punt problems. Punt the problems. Punt, 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 punt. We'll deal with it tomorrow. I told him I can't wait until then. Will you ask Elena to cancel her trip and tell her about my boundaries? He said, I can't make her do anything as she's no longer my wife. I can tell her that you don't like her and you can't stand her. Happy? I said, I don't feel like I'm ever going to be your wife. She is more your wife than I'll ever be. She just doesn't like to put out, so you got me for that. Ooh, shit. That's how I feel. I feel so unloved. If we break up and Alana takes you back, would you get back together with her? He said, stop. You know how much I love you. Why are you saying this nonsense? I asked again and again. He said, why do you want, what do you want me to say? That if I'm single, I'll work things out with Elena? I guess I got my answer. I gave him the ring and said, I'll leave tomorrow morning. He said, what? Are you serious? What is going on tonight? He started saying how we're going to get married and have babies. He knows I left my previous boyfriend because he didn't want to get married. And he begged me not to leave before the holidays. He suggested staying and starting counseling in January. I told him I really don't have the energy or time for this. He started crying. I was awake all night crying on and off. In the morning, he made me breakfast and hugged me. So uncomfortable. And said, please don't end it permanently. Let's be in touch and work on our relationship. I told him, no, I just can't. Sorry. Again, he cried and left for work. I talked to my brother in the morning, and he said his girlfriend will let me stay with them until I find a place. I wrapped the Christmas gifts for Grayson, mostly, and him, and left them under the tree so they can open them on Christmas morning. He asked if I'd at least join them for Christmas morning, and I said no. As for the tickets, they were on my credit card. I'll call Air Canada today and see if I can transfer them to my brother and his girlfriend. I'm so grateful for them letting me stay at their place. Good move. Commenter, he legit wanted to paint you as the bad guy and say that you didn't like her instead of telling her that she was overstepping. Damn, OP, I'm calling it now. He'll get back together with her. Heal yourself from this relationship so you'll never accept crumbs for a relationship. Original OP, that's what hit me the most. I'm going to tell her you hate her and cannot stand her instead of telling her that I'm his future wife and respect her boundaries. Throwing me in front of the bus. Yeah, Uh, that's because this dude's a coward and a brozo but mostly a coward and this whole super uncomfortable situation of keeping her, letting her essentially still be in a relationship with him and still be functionally his wife for all, but romantic endeavors and living together is just very, very weird. That's a very uncomfortable, weird thing that apparently Elena didn't mind at all. She loved it. She's going to be around. She's there for it, but expecting someone else to, to put up with that is a huge ask. If he's going to have that close of a relationship with his ex-wife for parenting, for co-parenting purposes, then it's it's not one of those situations where she's coming to like your birthday party. That's 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 one of the things that is with is out of scope. It's out of scope. And if you were going to make something like that work, you would have to basically line out these things and say, this makes sense. This makes sense. This does not. This she gets to go to. This she gets to go to. This she does not. The biggest brozo moment in all of this is OP saying, these things bother me. I have feelings about these things. These feelings are going to destroy our relationship. And him just being like, oh, we're, we're tired. Let's talk about it tomorrow. That is not how you solve problems in a relationship. And that's probably why he and his ex are no longer together. They're friendly now because they don't have to live with each other and actually work through problems. They just go to parties and stuff together. And he does not respect you, OP. Not at all. And you did get your answer. He's a coward. And you're going to be much happier alone. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one comes from the Am I the A-Hole subreddit and is titled, Am I the Asconaut for Overreacting Overcake? 
First of all, I don't know that there's such a thing. And second of all, peep the awesome Christmas shirt that says mental illness is the gift that keeps on giving. And it is provided by the Mental Illness Sucks Institute, M-I-S-I. Check it out. Originally posted February 19th, 2021. I, 23 female, am living with my boyfriend, 27 male. I've definitely gained the COVID-15s over 2021. I've decided to go on a little health journey to lose those couple extra pounds. My birthday came around the corner, and one of my friends made me this lovely lunchbox cake. If you don't know what Korean lunchbox cakes are, search it up. It's adorable. I'm doing it. Hold on. I have to, I have to see what this is. Korean lunchbox cake. Well, isn't that just the cutest thing you ever did see? It's just an adorable little cake. It's like the size of a cheeseburger. It's a tiny Earl Grey cake, about four inches in diameter, with little heart-shaped strawberries and frosting frogs holding signs that say happy birthday. It made my little heart happy. I took it home and decided to eat it the next day, as I was having digestive issues at the moment, and I wanted to enjoy it on date night with my boyfriend. It was the perfect little add-on for a cheat day, too. My boyfriend came home, saw the cake in the fridge, and asked if he could have a slice. I said no, and that I wanted to eat it the next day, and that he could have some the next day, too. He made little comments here and there, sulked, and after I continuously said no, went into his room to play video games for the rest of the night. <laughs> okay, hold on. That's overreacting about cake. Also, quick way to get you to hear. God, you won't let me have cake, babe. I'm just going to go play video games. Don't bother me. When I went downstairs this morning, the cake was gone, and there were dirty dishes in the sink with little signs of happy birthday crumpled up and soggy on top. <gasps> the whole cake was eaten. Obviously, I knew that my boyfriend was the culprit. No, dude. Okay. You need to leave this man immediately. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Don't do those dishes. Go grab his shit. Go grab his Xbox or whatever the hell he was gaming on and throw it in the front yard. And drape that little soggy happy birthday sign over the top of it. I confronted my boyfriend and it didn't go well, for the lack of a better word. It basically boiled down to, if you would have just let me have a slice, I wouldn't have eaten the whole thing without you. <laughs> He said that this was his way of getting back at me for being so selfish and stingy. I tried rebutting and arguing that it was my birthday cake and I wanted to eat my own birthday cake. He still didn't understand why the cake was so important because my birthday was celebrated a week ago. He even joked that he was helping me out since I was on a diet anyway. This guy. I, uh, uh, mm -mm. I was getting upset and of course, being the crybaby I am, I shed a few tears. He didn't really like that, so he started chastising me a bit more, calling me immature. Hold up. Hold up! I'm gonna go sulk and pitch a fit and ignore you for the rest of the night because you wouldn't let me have a slice of the tiny birthday cake that someone gave to you so that you could enjoy it with me the next night and then waited for you to go to bed, came down, ate the whole damn thing. Uh, you're upset about it and you're immature. Mm, I leave this man immediately. So instead of staying home for our date night, I decided to stay at my friend's place. I told him that I was upset at him at the moment and that he was making me more upset with this conversation. So I was leaving for the night so we could both cool down. He's now saying that I'm a bitch for leaving and overreacting over cake. My friend said that I'm not re overreacting at all and that I was in the right for being upset because it was my birthday cake. I'm really conflicted. I'm definitely upset about the situation, but after all, it was just cake. No, 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 no. Maybe I should have, maybe I shouldn't have started a fight and just have let it go. You didn't start a fight. What is this shit? Why are you backtracking? Maybe I should have stayed and talked it out for conflict resolution's sake. Am I the astronaut for leaving and overreacting over cake? We have an update we're going to get to. We have an update. We have an update. Uh, but before we dive into that update, it no, nothing hurts my soul more than seeing someone be a hundred percent in the right and question themselves. Also, his entire argument is a cow's opinion. It's a moose. It's a moot point. His entire argument that you were overreacting over cake, he cannot use because he overreacted over cake. His reaction to not being able to have. A slice of your tiny cake was to steal it and eat the whole thing. 
That is overreacting over cake. You being upset that he did that is not an overreaction. He cannot use that argument unless he's just a straight up bona fide brozo douche canoe idiot dumbass cake thieving some bitch. You think maybe you should have stayed and talked it out for conflict resolution sake. There is no resolution to this conflict because he won't he won't even own his actions. He said he wouldn't have done it if you had given him a piece of the cake. What kind of asshat shows so little respect for their partner and then blames them for it? Oh, <sighs> mm. He hit it all, and then passively, aggressively gaslit her. <laughs> Zach, dig a hole. Man. I, 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 okay, let's dive into the update. Update February 21st, 2021. I would like to start by thanking everyone for their comments under my post. I appreciate them, and I appreciate the time you took to break things down for me. I apologize for not replying to many comments, both in the thread and DMs. Things were getting overwhelming. I decided the best thing to do was to leave the relationship. Thank you. Despite how easy the comments made it seem, it was a difficult decision. This was the man I spent four years of my life with, someone who I thought I might have a future with. Maybe I was a little naive in even thinking that. For those of you who are wondering why I would be with such a man, I would like to say that he is so much more than what I wrote in that post. He is kind, charismatic, caring. We volunteer together at shelters and charities. It was how we met in the beginning. That's what he does to meet women. Worked on you. He has shown to be considerate and understanding of so many people and and their many circumstances. And through this, I love him because he has accepted and held on to me for all of the faults I may have. I can confidently say that he loves me as well. I don't think you can love someone and not respect them. I don't. But like many pointed out, things can go sour sometimes when he doesn't get his way. I won't indulge in every situation with you, but things really were put into perspective after reading these cake comments. You were right. It wasn't just about a cake. It was the way he reacted when things didn't go right. I hate to say that it was a pattern of behavior that I have overlooked for the sake of comfort and love. I feel like an idiot to have put up with everything for so long. I broke it off this morning. It wasn't fun. I was left sad, heartbroken, tired, and yet a little relieved. I feel bad for ending my monthly lease with him, but I think being physically separated is for the best. My boyfriend is also well-respected within our mutuals. I'm a bit afraid of the backlash from the breakup. Unfortunately, my relationships with others may be broken as well. I'm living with my friend at the moment. She has graciously taken me in. Of course, I'll be repaying her by helping her out with the mortgage. We made and enjoyed a little celebratory breakup cake with frosting froggies and all. Again, thank you so much for your input and comments. Thank you for the wake-up call. I wish I could share some cake with you, too. OP, you made the right move here. Um, The fact that you still think he's a good guy gives me a little bit of worry that you may may fall back into this. And yeah, the story that he's probably going to broadcast to all of your mutual friends is going to be a bullshit version of the story. So you're going to have to end up being in a situation where You either tell your side of the story to combat it because you know he's going to go broadcast at first because that's what the assholes always do. You're going to have to basically decide if if those mutual friends that you have are are worth fighting for. And if they are, make sure that they know your side of the story as well. And then if they still side with him, screw them. Those aren't the kind of people that get to be in your life. It is uh, an unfortunate situation there, but he that's. I just, I, I just, I just, I just, I, I don't know how she can say all these good things about him. And then for him to have a bad moment, everyone has moments. Everyone has moments where they can be an asshole. Oh, Blake Shelton that right now. I, I can definitely be a huge asshole at times, but what he did was premeditated. It was vindictive. It was beyond shitty. I mean, it was, it was for sure an ass con one move, but he did it in such a terrible way just nasty evil way it's just vindictive hey there it's dusty thunder with another reddit story for you and this one is from the aita subreddit and is titled Am I the astronaut for calling the police when the parents I babysit for were late? 
I 16 female sometimes babysit on weekends. My mom's coworker needed a babysitter and she gave him my number. I agreed to babysit three kids from 2 p.m. till 8.30 p.m. because the parents had some party to get to. It went okay, but the parents didn't get back at 8.30. At 9, I tried calling him, but he didn't pick up. I texted a few times. At 9.30, I tried calling again and again at 10 and 10.30. I tried calling my parents, but my dad was at a work dinner and my mom didn't pick up. I tried calling the parents of the kids again, but they still weren't picking up or responding. At 11.30ish, I called the police because I didn't know what else to do, and I was worried something might have happened to the parents too. They came, and around the same time, the parents came back. The dad screamed at me, and he's still very upset. Okay, we're going to red flag that. Edit, I called the police because I was worried about the parents not picking up or being late. And because I really had to get home, not to involve CPS or anything like that. Edit two, since some people ask, I didn't call the emergency number, so I'm not in the U.S. Police isn't violent here. And I was paid up front, so not for the extra three hours. This was a response to a few comments. I don't think all U.S. cops are violent. Um, So they didn't call the emergency line. They called the non-emergency line just to basically be like, hey, I don't know what to do. This is a 16-year-old freaking kid. The question is... Am I the ask it out for calling the police when the parents of babysit for were late and they weren't just late. It was three hours late, Sam. That's three hours with no communication. She had every right to call the police worried. Yeah. And again, not the emergency line. She called the non-emergency line. If you are going to have somebody caring for your children, you have to have some way to communicate. What if something had happened to one of the kids? The parents just decide to not pick up. They're just going to be like, we're we're going off the grid tonight. And it wasn't that it went straight to voicemail. It wasn't that they were out of range. They just chose not to answer. How is that even possible when you have kids to not answer when the babysitter calls? Also, how is it possible to say you're going to get back at 830 and then just show up at 1130 and not even think to call ahead and be like, can you stay? Like, is that okay? We're so sorry. Arrange it. Communicate. Whatever it is. This was complete irresponsibility on the part of the parents. And it could have put OP in this position where like, what does she say? She had to be somewhere. She's going to just have to leave the kids alone. What I mean, and we've read a story like that before too. And in my position there, I'm like, I'm like, I could never do that to the kids, but, but who is, who is abandoning the children here? It's like, they just dumped them in her care. And what if they never came back? What is she supposed to do? This is a 16 year old kid that you're putting in a very precarious position. Also, person that you're asking to care for your children. I think you would offer a little bit of respect to. And then whenever they took some kind of action because you wouldn't respond screaming at them. Wow. Terrible, 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 terrible. You have to communicate when people are caring for your children. You have to respond. You have to answer because if something had happened and they just didn't answer at all, that's a choice they made. Terrible, stupid, idiotic choice. NTA for you here, OP. That's, uh, I'm so sorry that you had to go through something like that. That is, for a 16-year-old kid, scarring, I'm sure. And uh, and now, anytime she goes and babysits for someone else, the adult way to approach it, or the, uh, not adult way, because these adults are idiots, but the uh, the responsible way and the the growing and bettering oneself way and the learning by problems and building systems to prevent future kind of problems way to approach this would be to establish some kind of uh, understanding with the parents whenever you are babysitting and be like okay look if you are not back at X time I will call uh, if you are more than X time past I, I will have to involve other parties have have this system set up and basically backup plans on top of backup plans on top of backup plans. I would think that the parents would be the ones instituting those because they, you know, care for their children. But as a babysitter, putting myself in a 16 year old girl's shoes, I would feel much more comfortable if I had backup plans on backup plans on backup plans and an agreement for them to sign. There has to be some kind of structure here to hold people accountable. And this is probably something that happens a lot. People hire a babysitter, say they're going to be back at X time and then just don't show up for like several hours later than that. It's garbage.